in three, two. Transparent batteries connect any device to the conference room display and a 3D printed plane. Yes, I mean an airplane. I'm Callie Lewis. Welcome to Geek TV number 219. This episode of Geek TV is brought to you by Squarespace. One quick thing before we get into it, Saturday night the 30th at 9 p.m., John P. and I will be doing a Google Hangout with Trey Ratcliffe, the 17th most popular person on Google+, and famous HDR photographer and friend. Even better, I think we're going to be able to live stream it for those of you who can't get into the Hangout. We're going to try at least. Check my tweets for update and more information, twitter.com slash Callie Lewis or Google+. Just search Callie Lewis. Okay, so this is going to sound crazy, but if you've been following the world of 3D printing, you may understand just how possible it is. This is the SOLSA, Southampton University laser-centered aircraft. The entire thing, with the exception of the electric motor, of course, was printed with a 3D printer. It's the first unmanned aerial vehicle that's been created this way. The wingspan is six and a half feet, and it can go up to 100 miles per hour. Awesome to see. And even better, the university will be launching a new master's degree program in UAV design. See more at geekbeat.tv slash 3D printed plane. Take a look at this Geffen AV conference room processor. It'll allow you to connect pretty much anything you want to show off, whatever it is you want to show off. So today we're reviewing the Geffen AV conference room processor. I would give you a model number, but they don't really have one for it. So if you need to look it up, just go to geffen.com, look up the AV conference room processor. Now, this device is built to take every headache you have uh, when it comes to connections and, and just alleviate them. What we've got is six separate inputs. We've got four on the front panel and two on the back. Now this is nice because if you want to, you could put this box in a room and when people come in and they need to display content on a television they can plug right into the front now you've got every kind of connection you could possibly want I'm gonna demonstrate four different ones for you right now so what we've got is a DVD player connected via HDMI we've got a camcorder connected via component input we've got one laptop connected via DVI and another connected via VGA and the beautiful thing is this Geffen just does not care what the source is, what the resolution is, etc. It is connected to this Vizio monitor with HDMI output and it converts everything to a 1080p output. So let's take a look at how these sources work. There's a keypad on the front that has a set of buttons. First of all, I'm going to switch over to the component one input and you're going to see this is the camcorder. We're aiming it over there and it's nice and clear. And when you look at the readout, you're going to see that it's coming in at 1080i 60 and it's outputting at 1080p 60. Now, if we switch over to the VGA input, this is one of our laptops. It's running at a lower resolution. Now you're going to see it's coming in at 1280 by 800, but still outputting at the 1080p. We can also switch over to the DVI input. Now we've got another computer running at a totally different resolution. This one's 1920 by 1200, and it's upscaling to 1080p. Finally, we'll switch over to HDMI input. Now this is a DVD player, so it's coming in at 1080p and then it's going to be going out at 1080p. What's beautiful about this is you'll notice that the screen fairly rapidly switches from one source to the other and yet the TV is always looking like it's coming in at 1080p. Pretty cool. Take a look at the entire review at geekbeat.tv slash Geffen. Now let's talk science. Imagine all those gadgets you carry around being transparent. You could see their guts. Well, what if you couldn't see their guts and it was just purely transparent? Scientists at Stanford University have created a transparent battery. They're using a material that I can't even begin to pronounce, so we're calling it PDMS, short for this. They say that if something is smaller than 50 microns, you'll perceive it as transparent. So they made a framework where each line is 35 microns wide. Piece by piece, the battery is there, but we don't really see it. Awesome. When you're ready to take your website to the next level and make it easy to manage, check out Squarespace. You can create it simply by tracking and dropping sidebars or images, and you can use their templates that'll make it look great. If you're the hands-on kind, though, don't worry, you can fiddle with the code, too. Their iPhone and iPad apps make it easy to manage on the go. Check out squarespace.com and get a two-week free trial, plus 10% off for three months if you sign up in July. This is your last chance for that offer, so you better do it now. Squarespace.com. Be sure to use GeekBeat7. I want to know what website you sign up with. Callie at GeekBeat.tv. 
Students might like this, an ode to the good old days of having a calculator in our three ring binders that we took to school. Yes, we actually carried physical calculators. Can you believe it? It's the binder pad from ZooU. It'll safely hold your iPad 2 in the binder, but also allow you to use it as a case for other tasks like brushing your teeth or cooking food. Just don't get it too close. It's $29.99. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe either on iTunes or YouTube if you haven't already. And don't forget about that hangout with Trey Ratcliffe, 9 p.m. Saturday the 30th. I'm Callie Lewis. Bye-bye. Three, two, let's go. <laughs> Can we go yet? Ugh, I just, I just scraped my teeth with my teeth. I hate that. For reals.